In modern cycling nutrition, all we hear about are carbohydrates. Carbs, carbs, and more carbs. Which is understandable, it's the high octane fuel that fuels high intensity exercise. But what about protein? Protein's always been a big consideration for bodybuilders. It's increasingly so for general health and longevity. But what about for pro cyclists? How much are they consuming during the Tour de France? What type of protein and when? Well, I've spoken to three nutritionists from World Tour teams who've got the answers. The same thing for a Tour de France rider, but the level of importance has exponentially gone up. It's true that we are all very focused on carbs because that's uh, our source of, main force, source of energy, at least. But protein also has a big role in cyclists, I would say. So we're not having big amounts of muscle breakdown and wastage through through the Tour de France. That's, that's the main role, really. Before we dive into the details, I'll just give a quick and simplistic overview of the roles of fat, carbs and protein in our bodies. Fat is the most highly concentrated form of energy with over twice as many calories per gram as carbs or protein. It's essential to brain and body function and helps the absorption of key nutrients. Carbs, when broken down into glucose, fuel our muscles and brain, and when converted into ATP through glycosis, provides with our main source of energy during high-intensity exercise. The muscles can only store so much, though, which is why fueling with carbs during longer events can provide such a large performance benefit. So what about protein? Well, it is essential for muscle growth, hence its importance for bodybuilders and strength-based athletes, but it's also essential for muscle repair and recovery and every other tissue in our body. So you'd have thought it would be a key part of pro cyclist daily requirements. Is it? Let's find out. You're completely right in the foundation of what protein is used for there. And it's essentially the same thing for a Tour de France rider, but the level of importance has exponentially gone up in wanting to spread that protein out through the day, wanting to get paramount timings of that protein as well to give sufficient recovery. And ultimately, we're really looking for reductions in inflammation and the ability to repair muscle as quickly and as much as possible within the timeframes that they have. Well, protein has to do with a lot of things. Uh, for sure, it has to do with muscle repair, as we all know. But during a multi-stage races like the Tour de France, muscle takes action into also muscle recovery, the immune function, the enzyme production, and also the mitochondrial biogenesis, and for sure, met metabolic adaptations that come with the racing. So it's a quite important nutrient in cycling. It's true that we are all very focused on carbs because that's a uh, or source of, main force, source of energy at least, but protein also has a big role in cyclists, I would say. Yeah, I mean, it's helping with, you know, muscle muscle recovery, repairing muscle damage and um, kind of optimising muscle protein synthesis so we're not having big amounts of muscle breakdown and wastage through through the Tour de France. That's, that's the main role, really. Um, the side... You know, some research that shows that it may help with glycogen resynthesis post post stage as well. Um, but yeah, it's mostly the the muscle muscle repair. But obviously, protein. You know, all of the cells in our bodies contain protein. So there's you know, skin. You know, things like that when we crash in. It's it's, it's yeah for, for recovery in general, but remodeling and repairing tissues. Makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, protein is essential for all of us in muscle repair and recovery, but also general tissue repair, regardless of how little or how much exercise we're doing. But do you need more protein in a sport and race which is so heavily endurance-based? I mean, a lot of the literature would say kind of 1.6 is, is what's recommended for, for endurance athletes, but at the kind of elite level and the amount of um, training and racing that they're doing, I, I find that two gram per kilogram is more yeah more applicable to our guys in terms of mus muscle recovery um, and just again even if you weren't focusing on it it would be surprising if riders were kind of mm. falling below two grams per kilogram at the Tour de France or in a, or in a high volume camp excess protein consumption will still cause weight gain you know it's not like some magical nutrient that does that only builds muscle. You know, if you're in a calorie surplus, doesn't matter where those calories come from, you you will gain gain weight. And things like protein bars 
I'd banned when I joined the team because I can remember seeing them on the nutrition table and riders taking two or three as like a for a top up before lunch and you know they've, they've had 400 calories that they'd not even thought thought about so we have an approach that if you want a chocolate bar have a chocolate bar and enjoy it but don't mistake a protein bar for some miraculous free calories that, that that don't count and they actually have you know a lot of laxative sweeteners in there as well so so that but yeah the main the main reason is less protein means there's more space for carbohydrate total protein is always the most important because even if you get the timing right on everything if you don't have sufficient bricks to rebuild the wall it's still going to be under repaired but when we then look at obviously a, a Tour de France rider where timing is also important as well as total, it's about getting the total protein balance through the day, making sure that we're stimulating that recovery process at breakfast and immediately after the stage and continuing that through into the evening as well as just before bed with an evening snack to keep a steady flow of amino acids released through the night. So typically that last meal of the day is also a dairy-based protein supplement and that's to make sure that it's sort of drip fed to the body through the night is it exactly yeah so go for a really slow digesting protein like casein which uh, is majority de derived from like dairy so like a yogurt or skier or something like this and we're just making sure that we're getting sufficient amounts at these different timings to make sure that we're always maximally stimulating that recovery process of um, muscle protein synthesis. We take that into account and we know that if a cyclist gets in a crash and gets throat rashes, we need to increase the protein because uh, I'm not sure exactly the protocol because I'm not a physiology expert, but it is true that uh, it gets into the, um, into the injury and it helps recover the tissue. So it's essential to include slightly more protein than in a normal racer that hasn't crashed or anything. Yeah, so if it's too low, then uh, there will definitely be an impairment in the ability to recover the muscle and, and rebuild that wall, as, as we mentioned. But in terms of having too much, it's more of a case of, is it going to then take away from the other things that we need? So like mainly carbohydrate in this instance. So we'll have a certain requirement of carbohydrate both to fuel the race and to make sure we perform adequately and also enough carbohydrate to replace all those spent glycogen stores and get ready again for the next stage. So if you're having so much protein, it's taking away from that. Or, of course, protein is also very satiating. It's very filling. And if they get so much protein that they feel really full and then feel unable to eat more food, then that can also be an issue because then you're trying to really force them to eat a bit more and, and they're struggling. And it's already a bit of a battle sometimes when it is such high amounts. You know, when you're doing low carbohydrate training, the body will start to use amino acids and, and muscle protein for fuel. So if you're not supplementing that quite aggressively around training, then there's more chance of, of breakdown and becoming weaker. But over the past five years, because we're now much more carbohydrate dominant we match in energy balance and we're really avoiding periods of, of low carbohydrate availability so for me it's not as kind of critical but just with the sheer amounts of food that riders eat in the Tour de France it's very hard to be kind of have a low protein intake you know even if you were just if you were kind of vegetarian the amount of pasta oats rice bread the guys are eating when you look at over a day you know a seven thousand eight thousand calorie day you're hitting quite a lot of protein in the in the in the daily amount just by default so we don't we don't go too high um with mealtime portions typically yeah 100 150 grams of, of chicken or fish would be yeah what we'd be using for a for a um evening meal or lunch Breakfast might be two eggs um, or a skier, so it's not huge amounts. And for me, the most important thing with protein, with the, the hierarchy, is the daily total. And it's very easy to for our guys to hit two grams per kilogram without even trying to. So it's yeah, it's not something we we go after aggressively because they just hit hit targets quite quite easily. We start on the the carbohydrates and energy, and then the fat and the protein kind of fall fall out of that. 
So, protein intake is reasonably high. Two to two and a half grams per kilo of body weight per day is actually at the higher end of recommendations even for bodybuilders. But as our experts pointed out, it's not hard for the riders to meet that mark because of the huge number of calories they need to consume each day. There's even the risk that they consume too much protein and it either prevents them consuming enough overall calories or conversely, puts them in a caloric excess that leads to unwanted weight gain. Protein, though, comes in many forms, so I was keen to find out how specific riders need to be in terms of what form their protein comes in, whether the timing of that intake is important, and whether they ever consume any during the stages to increase speed of recovery. What we do, I, I can give you a, a, an easy example. For example, on breakfast, we would do um, some carbs for sure, and then some protein for sure, uh, 20, 30 grams of protein. Then during the race, we wouldn't include any protein. That's the team's uh, protocol. And then as a post race, we would do just Right after the stage, immediately after, we would include the tartary, as we all know that it's very popular for the antioxidant effect, and also a recovery shake. We work with Amax, and they have a recovery shake with uh, 20 grams of, protein, of carbs and 20 of protein. And this is like a fast recovery to make sure that the glycogen resynthesis and also the muscle repair starts right after the stage. Then they shower and then they would do a proper meal with real food, with carbs and chicken, eggs, whatever. And then, depending on the rider, if they can eat more or less right after the stage, then we would do a snack or not. And then we would have a proper dinner, also prioritizing whole foods. And then if necessary, because the rider has crashed or they are injured or anything, or they just are not recovering very well, then we would put a protein before bed, low release protein to make sure that while they're sleeping, there's anabolism instead of catabolism. On one side, I guess it's also uh, for adding some variety and then on the same place uh, red meat or legumes can be uh, harder to digest so we don't want to compromise having uh, digestion problems or having to go to the bathroom too much uh, so we kind of avoid high fiber or slower digestion foods before important stages because we need to make sure that the riders are fueled well and don't have any troubles with fueling both on and off the bike yeah and there's evidence showing that more and more like when you're just looking at pure muscle protein synthesis it's actually it's actually fine to have larger amounts in less frequent sittings rather than the old adage of you have to have 20 grams every four hours else your muscles will waste away <laughs> i think as we as as the scientific techniques improve and we know more then the timing is probably less less crucial um with protein i would say the opposite for, for carbohydrate because we're trying to from them crossing the finish line we've essentially got 18 hours to get as much muscle glycogen restocked as possible um the only time that, that i would say protein is time relevant is periods of like if fasted training or low energy availability or if somebody's maybe in a big calorie deficit then we would um focus more on the timing of protein but that's not really something we we do too much of in this team so we keep it to very high amino acid profile uh and high, uh, fast digesting protein in that immediate post uh, race fueling and that's of course just to give rapid replenishment and and repair in that time period but the rest of the day it is just making sure that we're getting all the essential amino acids and at least a sufficient amount of protein in it. So that could be obviously the standard eggs at, at breakfast and then moving to you know chicken and other meats and fishes um, later on in the day and just making sure that we get adequate amounts. No, I mean, with, with vegan and, and vegetarian athletes, we, we don't have any in this Tour de France squad. You, you probably need to go a little bit higher with the, most of the research would say because some of those proteins maybe aren't as bioavailable or absorbed as well so you probably need to have a have a bit extra and i think for vegetarian riders that that's fine that's quite easy to to do because they're still consuming yogurt and eggs so that's not a big thing but i think with vegan riders um i've not had any in the tour de france but it's then starting to think about the fiber load of some of those you know vegan sources so you you probably have to supplement a little bit more there but it's not something i've had experience with in the tour de france but i've worked with with vegan and vegetarian athletes before um and i think generally as a society we you know we we do eat too much meat don't we we eat too much animal 
protein there's not there's, you can't get away with that and we we try not to um use too much um not using it excessively being quite careful with our portions does a rider have any protein at all during a stage no no there's no there's there's not really any like rationale for it that i would see um it's, it's more important that they're getting the, the right amount of carbohydrate in. The racing is so fast and aggressive. You know, there is potential for, for stomach discomfort if you start throwing protein in the mix there. Satiety as well. So, no, it's not something we, we do in a race. The days have gone now of kind of a breakaway goes after 10K, easy pedaling in the peloton for four hours and then a chaotic mm. last 20K. Those stages don't really exist. I know that teams you may used to use protein on those kind of stages to to help riders in an energy deficit but it's not not an approach we use so it sounds like protein intake during a stage is a thing of the past a team had certainly experimented with it but with the intensity increasing year on year plus more and more knowledge on optimal dietary timing it's no longer a consideration uh, my last question then was whether excess protein is a potential problem in the off-season when pro cyclists are doing fewer kilometres and often spending more time in the gym. Is there a risk they could put on unwanted muscle? What we started to do previously uh, at EF is I would get multiple DEXA scans through the year to monitor what their body composition was like pre-season, mid-season and end of season to see both what the, the toll of the season has been on them uh, but also to keep a great monitor on their body composition and seeing where and if they've lost fat, if it's the purpose or not the purpose, and same for muscle mass. And it can definitely be a case that, you know, they're not wanting to gain muscle mass in their upper body, that, you know, that is a, a cyclist overall, unless maybe they are a sprinter, um, and even then it's not completely needed. So... I don't think they'll consume so much protein and train so much that they're suddenly going to come back off preseason like uh, bodybuilders. But it's definitely um, a thought process that we go down in terms of what's the program they're being given, what's um, the nutritional ratios that they're going to do. I think a lot of riders probably in off season probably just want to chill more than more than anything. So it's not been too much of an issue so far. It's individual, so some some athletes, they just need to, to look at, at the dumbbells and they can gain muscle mass. But as soon as they start, yeah, and weight. <laughs> and as soon as they start doing the um, the volume on the bike, then that, that generally balances out. I've seen some riders who, they do a lot of cross-country ski in the off-season and they will actually get some, some definition and upper body muscle, and shoulders and arms. But then as soon as that falls away and they start doing... 20 25 30 hours a week on the bike then that that muscle mass tends to tends to go the, the most important thing we're trying to prioritize is the the lean tissue on the on the lower body um but yeah it's it, we, we do try and individualize what what the guys do in the off season but again it's quite nice to gain some weight in the mm. off season both mentally and for the metabolism as well and for hormonal health so we do within reason like riders to, to gain weight in the off-season break but again the off-season break's getting shorter and shorter they're, they're quite soon back doing structured training now so there is a lot that goes into dialing a professional cyclist nutrition carb intake is the highest priority as that's their primary fuel as they race but protein is certainly not ignored too little will impair muscle repair and recovery but given the 7,000 calories they consume on average each day that's rarely a consideration the type of protein and the timing of it is also calculated, but it predominantly comes through whole food. Anyway, I hope you all found this chat with the experts as interesting as I did. If you did enjoy it, I would really appreciate it if you click on the thumbs up button below this video. And if there are any other nutrition specifics that you'd like us to delve into, let us know in the comments section down below.